Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. But together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. Advantage. Right, dude, you Get seem it. to have a box of Diddy Men. A box of Ken Dodd and uh, Diddy Men. Please explain. It contains more than 1,000 soldiers. Well, that's ridiculous. Uh, this is Black Powder Epic Waterloo from uh, Black Powder Games. No, Warlord Games, isn't it? I mean, do you want to... While, while I at this, this, at this time, pro, At this time in, in, in its current form, it might as well be Black Powder Games because they're kicking out <laughs> some awesome stuff. Yeah. Okay, so what is the card? The French one here. Fine. We do have the French. This is a uh, Throne Apart Diddy Men, I believe it's called. <laughs> yeah, mate. That's a fact. Um, it's got some blurb on the back, which is awesome. And it says here, French infantry, 800 line slash light infantry, 80 skirmish in Voltigeurs, and 10 mounted commanders in blue plastic. Didn't in blue know. plastic, they are in pre-colored uh, blues. You've got some French heavy cavalry, four bases of cuirassiers, mm -hmm. uh, three bases of carabineurs, or whatever they're called. <laughs> you got you reading that all Carabineurs, and three bases of dragoons. <laughs> Mm, yeah. yeah. French light cavalry also, it just goes on and on and on. Four bases of lances, three bases of hussars, and four bases of chasseurs as chauffeur. So this is this is an indicative of how the sprues work, because they're a little bit oh, different from what you might expect. Okay. So mixed sprues, we'll, we'll get to that, sorry. you got some hussars. you got more, uh, you, that's all the horsey people. you got mm. ten foot artillery, six pounders. Six horse artillery, six pounders. Mm. Green plastic bases for all your figures. Many. Which are quite cool. And they, they all are. snip in, which is awesome. Snip in, clip in. Clip in. Uh, you obviously also get your other bits and bobs, flag sheets. Uh, what? What? MDF, oh, okay. Yes, you get MDF scenery pieces. I forgot about that. giving you the name of it. Yeah. Which is throwing the, the, the coaster, and I'm like, what are they sat out? Or decoaster, and I'm like, oh, well, you get like some, you know... <laughs> <laughs> what did you think that might be? I don't know. Something <laughs> that you put your hot mug on. <laughs> no, <it's there. laughs> right. Okay. Anyways, get this stuff. stuff out, and we'll be back in a second. Right. So you're not you're not going to see what John does. So I, I, I'll take the stuff out of mine. So you good. get you get three heavy cavalry sprues. That is a chunky box. You get a three light cavalry sprues. You get a mountain of one, two, three, four. Oh my god. One, two, three, four, five, ten. Infantry sprues. Ouch. We're going to talk about this in a little bit more detail. You get a little packet. Now, I really like this. This is your manual. And manuals you know, often get scoffed in I was in about here. to say. Individually bobby wrap. Beautiful. And this manual isn't... Oh, oh I, was, I just popped <laughs> it out. Fun. Bro, oh, mate, fun. bro. Uh, this is a black powder manual, but it's been kind of amended a little bit. We'll talk about that one. Okay. Uh, you get your mountain. Oh, my. Mountain of bases. For all of your different units. Arr, nearly at the end. You get your Sarissa Precision. Coaster. Coaster. <laughs> yeah. Uh, De Costa's house is what that is. Uh, nearly at the end of the box. Ooh. Ooh. Mate, have you been, already been here? What do you mean? This was... Did I pack it? Packed for you. Not just packed by, but packed for you. But by John. Not Mirella. I mean, it could have been me. Was it I you? I don't know where I am. In Moonlight at Warlord. You get six cracker dice. Yay! You get a flag sheet and you get a, a little booklet. And this... Ooh! That's is, handy for noobs like me. It's an un another unexpected inclusion. I think that this is, this is really nice. It's giving you a basic painting guide. But it's telling you some of that key information about things like what the Chaco plumes and the pom-poms, what they mean. So you kind of get an idea of how to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's them. handy. All right. We'll be back in a second as we sorted these piles out. Be right back. All right. I think probably people would like to start with the sprue. I know a lot of people have probably already covered this, so we're not going to labour it too much. No. Where do you want to start, John? Um, we got, let's, oh, yeah. Sorry, I've got your pa sorry yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, 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 the infantry, which we've, the, we've all seen now. Yeah. This So this French infantry sprue. So um, in the previous thing with the American Civil War black powder, they laid out their sprue in such a way as you've got five bases. Okay. Um, five stands of infantry, each made up of two ranks. Got four here. Now you've got four here, and they've used this, this lower half of the sprue differently. For 
So there's, there's a visual component here, which I think the problem with fives is no matter what formation you're in, it looks lopsided. Yeah, you know, no, you, fair you, enough, yeah, <laughs> you know, one way or another. If, if you're two bases wide or if you're three bases wide, you still got an uneven deck. Yes, even is good. Even even is good. So um, with this, you're very easily going to be able to do your, your column of march is just four bases deep. Oosh. Your column of attack is two bases Oosh. deep. Square and line is two bases. Uh, squares two bases squares have three squares sides. Have four sides, right? Yeah. So four is a good thing. Um, it's not going to work for everyone because I know some people play um, where the number of stands represents the stamina rating, and that's a nice visual indicator that. Yes. Okay. On the board. When you, when you like small, medium, large units and stuff like that, do you mean? Well, not just that, but whether it's small, medium, or large, maybe it's more important to know this can take three hits before it's. Kapoor. Taking casual, taking so excess casualties. Right. Maybe okay. that's more meaningful. So yeah. some, in terms of gameplay, so I think some people do that. And the thing about Napoleonics is there's a lot of distinctiveness in uniform. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think I think you're going to paint them really differently if they've got different troop qualities. So that's less of a thing. So what you get on here is you get you, so you get the seven basic sprues, um, and then uh, the seven basic rank Dude top guys. Yeah, and I think you've got some. In great coats and some not, so yes. you can choose to have regiments entirely in great coats and entirely not. And then, um, and this has caused a little bit of a, a little bit of uh, disappointment for some people. Is your standard bearer company hmm. the standards on the left hand side? Right. Is this right? Okay. It's not in the middle. It should be in the middle. It should be in the middle, but then you probably, in most circumstances, you're more than one base one, wide. One, yeah. So that so will be in the middle. middle. It's only not in the middle when you're in column. When you're in when you're in column of march, at which point it does look a bit odd. Yeah, I can imagine. But but I, I think that that's probably a better idea. If you've got if you've got to do it like that. Although I would have put it on the right, because in military terms, right is usually the position of honour. Right. You know, so you would like the Romans would have their best cavalry would be on the right hand side. And that kind of legacy has been around for a long time. The best. Um, of course, my right is your left, so my, yeah. my very best is not facing your very best. All right, so it's a merry-go-round of... Uh... Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. Right, so instead of having that fifth base of infantry, like with the American Civil War one, you've got your cannon here, and this is, if you've not seen this, the way that they've designed this is it's really clever interesting. on the plastic sprue, which you have a wheel and two gunners on a strip, and a wheel and two gunners on another strip, and then the cannon is moulded separately. It just pops in the middle. Uh, yeah, but this is kind of really working with, because it's injection molded plastic, it needs to be as flat as possible mm. to flow properly. But you get, so you get in that depth of that nice, ca that nice plastic sculpted piece by doing it differently. It, it's clever. It, it is clever. Um, you've got your mounted colonel or your mounted brigadier or divisional commander. He looks very relaxed. He looks a bit chilled. Well, he's, he's French and he's, uh, he's like, oh. I just and here. French and the commander of the Frenchmen. <laughs> but what you've got... The, I've not so, seen that, the little dude. Yeah, where you previously in the American Civil War, this was just another that infantry been another company. Two, yeah. This is your light infantry. So in these, are these just uh, lines? The Voltigeurs. Voltigeurs. Yeah, so these, I think they recommend that you use four or five to a base. Let me see how many we've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe they even recommend eight to a base. Yeah. But you spread them out on these bases. And this is your, um, not necessarily light infantry battalions, or it could be. This is, most battalions had their own light infantry company, which just they would little, forward deploy. Right, little skirmishy yeah. dudes. But it's it's just nice that they've, they've yeah. used that space to provide yeah. that. This kind of tactic isn't widely used in the American Civil War, skirmish order in that same way, um, but it is very extensively used in this period. So it's really nice to see that, that you've got that in there. Good. That's the infantry sprue. Um, I mean, there's some beautiful painted examples on their website uh, to share yeah. with you if you've not seen them. Some to the point where I, I didn't think they actually used these miniatures because they, <laughs> they got some serious detail in them. Oh, you thought they just, they yeah, faked like, it, they made some three ups yeah, and then yeah, and painted them. There yeah. is some detail, it must be noted on this, considering it is just a line dude bloke, shoulder to mm. shoulder. Yeah. There is quite some detail. And if you remember, Stallard was, um, um, when, I, th I think it was when we interviewed him, but maybe it was when somebody else, and he talked about how 
he, he, these are based shoulder to shoulder because you never get a 28 mil miniature to give you that close order look. It just never looks right, yeah. There's, there's never looks big right. gaps. And for those of us that have done single round based miniatures, there's huge gaps yep, yep. in them. I agree. You know, and, and it takes a bit of a mindset change for me to accept that. I'm not still not mad keen on... 25 mil round base with really? a massive gap between the between the guys. Well, no. they've done a good job here. But that's but that's nice. But it's also nice that it's it's an evolution from their first attempt with the American Civil War. There's they're, they're putting more on the sprue, and you're really going to see that as we look at the cavalry sprue. Oh my! Or the two cavalry sprues. So which one next, sir? Uh, first one that I have here is. Heavy Cavalry. Heavy Cavalry. So you get three uh, Heavy Cavalry sprues, um, which you've got 10 Infantry sprues. Um, the Heavy Cavalry types that you are getting in here, gonna have a look, you've got Carassiers, Carabiniers, and Dragoons. And if you look... So what's the deal then? Are it's these... not the... So these... They're all the same, right? No, no, these, these models are all quite different. But because... Um, this kind of injection molded plastic, it's a very, very expensive to make the to make the molds for the spray for the sprues. Mm. So what they've done is rather than making three different sprues, they've got a bit of a mix mixed on the cavalry here. on each sprue. Right. And I think that that's made it affordable. So um Okay. It, I am so seeing differences now. Yes, you are sir. seeing differences now. So these are your heavy cavalry. So what you should be noticing, John, is these guys have all got straight swords. Yes, they do. Yeah. Um, and the three different types of dragoons may not be heavy cavalry. That's something to debate. Oh um, really? So your carassier is your is your standard um, Napoleonic War, heavy cavalryman, heavy uh, heavy horse, big guy, straight sword, shock cavalry. Usually, usually better quality cavalry. Okay. Carabiniers, you're going to see on here. They are. I think the French ones still have a cuirass. Yeah, it looks like they have these models, but they're also carrying a carbine. Are they now? Yeah, so you'll need to you'll need to flip the sprue over to oh, see. Oh yes, they do. Yeah. They have rifles. Yeah. So they they're carrying a carbine. They look very similar to the Carassiers before you paint them. Now, when they're painted, they're going to look quite different. Yes. Yeah. yeah true fact. Because uh, they they're quite colourful. These. Um, and then your dragoons are on the other half. Are they the ones with the different hats? Completely different hats. Hmm. Because those. The carabineers, or whatever you call them, and the other ones seem to have a very similar yes helm yes. with the the plume down the back. With, with the, the other with, dudes, with the tassels, yeah, and the other dudes have got like a proper yeah. I mean, this is this is where I'm in danger of not actually knowing the proper answer. It was to just this. on if you knew. I, I, it, yeah. Uh, yes. But but without painting, looking at this dark blue plastic, in, it's, in it's, it's not difficult. great light. Yeah, it's difficult to quite. I can't 100 percent uh, tell you. Um, so dragoons. If there's a if I have a disappointment, this when you look at orders of battle, dragoons are the most common type of cavalry. Right. Which seems to be the least common on this sprue. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so light cavalry definitely can fight and we'll come to light cavalry in a minute but its principal role is more uh, strategic it's more pursuing a routing army it's keeping things away on the flanks skirmishing around the edges or if you start manoeuvring in line in front of them then they'll have you get an opportunity yeah 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 but they're not shock cavalry in the same way. Lancers, these guys are, Lancers right? can be. Are these? These guys are. A bit more. But you tend to have light cavalry in brigades integral to, to infantry formations. So you might have a division, might have, will have divisional cavalry. We'll have some chasseurs or something. Your cavalry core will usually be all heavy cavalry, but the bits that are not heavy cavalry are dragoons. But the dragoons seem to end up everywhere. Right. There's dragoons as divisional cavalry. There's dragoons with the heavy cavalry. And they're kind of often described as medium cavalry. Okay. They've got okay. a straight sword. And they actually come, if you remember the thing Happy we did mix. with the English Civil War, Andy. This is what I'm thinking of when you said... These are the successors of those dragoons. They're no longer mounted infantry, but they kind of are, I think. They seem very versatile. Like I a... think they have different boots. Like a bird's eye walk. So they're a bit more able to walk in them rather than riding them. They could fight them for, and they still carry the dragoon musket 
rather than a carbine or a pistol. Okay. They carry a musket. But they don't usually dismount and fight. By this period, they want as much cavalry as they can get. And so the Dragoons fundamentally are, are shock cavalry. But they're a really common type of cavalry. And you get a small amount of them. Whereas Carabiniers are, a, are, a, 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 are an extremely limited number of them in the French army. Hmm. But the great thing about this stuff is a lot of the grognards out there are going to know is... You can re you can paint these in different colours. You can use them as as Dutch carabiniers oh, yeah, yeah. or or whatever else. You can reuse them. So it's not that all the uniforms are the same, but they take they're close enough at this scale, right? At, at this scale, the colour is probably more important than the yeah, fine detail. Yeah. Um, but also they they take ideas from one another. The uniforms are similar, although not the same. But that's probably more that you know if you're expecting to see um, em embroidered police on something <laughs> in this scale, you, you miss it. But you're going to have to yeah. paint that on, right? <laughs> um, so. But it's it's a good idea because I I think obviously I prefer it if this was a if this was a dragoon sprue that was a carabinian screw. but I don't think that that was ever going to happen. I think the way that they've done this is reducing the total number of sprues, which makes the range comprehensive. Yeah, I think without this, it just it just isn't the cost benefits on that. They've looked long and hard at how to do this. Yeah, they put there isn't an American Civil War cavalry sprue. They obviously don't Yet. expect. Yet, but I don't think they necessarily expect to sell enough. Yeah, true. So they need to sell loads of these. At some point, it becomes really cheap to sell these. But but at the beginning, right now, yeah, yeah, they've got to sell a lot of yeah, them. They to need to sell the stuff that's good to sell. So you also get your horse artillery on here. Get a couple of banners, as, as and you, and you get and you get a couple of banners. A couple of yeah. eagles. Um, again, grognards will know. I think cavalry regiments tended to leave their standard. I mean, charging across the battlefield holding a flag. <laughs> when oh. you're supposed to charge into someone. That's the way to go. <laughs> I don't know whether they took them on campaign. They may they may have done, but I think for example the British ones they didn't they didn't even take them with them. Not you know, even they're, they're, they're not even sure. present. But they they might be. And you've got uh you've got an artillery piece as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. Um but is is that different from the is it just a carbon it's probably copy? Probably it's a six pounder rather than a nine pounder. But again, Physically, uh, it looks the same. So we're told that we've got 10 foot artillery 6 pounder and 6 horse artillery 6 pounder. So the difference is the crew. I've got different yes. uniforms. Yes. Yeah? Yes. But, the, but, that. but it's both six, a 6 pounder. I would have thought you'd have got a 9, a nine pounder. A big fat one. It's not just a misprint, is it? It's not that. I, I mean, so. at, at this scale, I don't, I don't uh, know. It's a cannon, right? It's it, a cannon. It, it's it a is cannon. quite clearly a think, cannon. French actually used a huge range of artillery. Why? Because they nicked it. They nicked it? Yeah. Well, as they're marching through, nicking it from... Well, all they've the won a lot that... of wars. Well, yeah. And you walk off to... from... If you have a really big win, then you leave the battlefield with their artillery. <laughs> Winners! <laughs> and if you win a lot of wars, you sometimes end up, such as after Austerlitz, with more six-pound artillery, which your army doesn't use, than the eight- or nine-pound artillery that your army does use. But in terms of replacing or building new forces, we've got a couple of hundred Let's pounders just, now. Yeah, We're going to start using in. them. Yeah. So many many of these six-pounders probably were originally Austrian or Russian guns. Would that have caused any logistical problems with regards to, like, you know... Cannonball sizes, or I don't know. I, I don't know. Do you think that would? I think done? making a cannon is a much bigger deal than making a than cannonball. Than the cannonball, fact. <laughs> yeah, and it's not. It's not like like let a um, like quick fire and ammunition where you need a certain amount. It's not like there's measured powder. Does charges. this fit? Yes. There's a dude with a scoop <laughs> for the amount of powder you're going to use. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So I like cavalry sprue as well. Light cavalry. Uh, the, the, so um, if you like the spectacle of it, the light cavalry is where you're going to see the beautiful uniforms. It's where you're going to see people in pink and green and yellow and all of those different things. Hang on a minute. I went and put the every cavalry on the next <laughs> All right. You put it on the cavalry. You got the wrong one. So again, you've got the same. You've got the same bit at the top with the okay. with the um, horse Cannon. artillery crew and the six pounder. And those eagles. But then your cavalry types here, you have got, I'm just double checking, you've got hussars and lancers and chasseurs à cheval. So, um, yeah, I think your chasseurs à cheval are probably, are, are you common, like your basic grade ones? They're, they're going to be the ones um, that are the most uninteresting to look at. They so look like just 
normal line infantry. But they look like horse. infantry on a horse with a curved saber. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the ones in this in this <laughs> top corner. Um, you then you've got your line lancers down here. Are they the ones with the lance? They're the ones with the lance. They're really going to stand out. I'm getting yeah. pro. I'm getting pro. And nicely, they've got those pennants on them. Yeah, I like a lance bit pennant. of color. They really put some put some colour in your force. And your hussars, I Huzzah! still don't know why that is. These are these are the proper magnificent, fabulous horsemen. And um, fabulous. And so they're wearing they're they're up uh, at the top by the cannon, John. And you see that they wear their jacket over their shoulder. Yes. Why? Yeah, that's I think that's called it's called a police. Well, it's very thick and very heavy, and it's got all this big embroidered rope work across it. Yeah, it's only you, over their left shoulder. It's it's worn over the shoulder. Is it like a shield? Yes. It could stop the sabre cut. It a light cavalry sabre slash probably won't go absorb, through it. Yeah. So they they can parry with it. But I think I think it, you know I think it just Fashion looks as well. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And so cool. I mean, you heard the term cloak and dagger. Yeah. That's a fight. It's not about hiding. Is you can wrap the cloak round your arm and you can parry with it. Against the slashing weapon. Who to thunk it? I'm not suggesting that you try it. Oh, I'm going to try it. <laughs> but it's better than not having anything <laughs> yeah, to true, parry with. True, you know? yeah. Your hand. Um, so, yeah. I don't know how true that is. I know that that's the sort of the story and why they do it. But they're really distinctive. So, your hussars are going to be... Um, are going to be better than just your line like cavalry. They're going to they're, they're generally a more prestigious regiment. Yeah. Now the reality of the French songs. army, certainly through the later period, is it's just conscripting the whole world to fight for him. So I don't know quite how how, how much how much they sustain, especially after the retreat from Moscow mm. after eighteen twelve. The army of eighteen fifteen is is weird because he's not had it for long. He's just come back. So there, there are veterans of his older campaigns in there, but it's a real mishmash of really good experience for older men and then really inexperienced to pad but, out the numbers. Yes. Um, but he's, because he's, he's trying to raise armies. What isn't often said about Waterloo is there's 350,000 Austrians and Russians about to cross the French border when this happens. That's a fair whack of people. So Waterloo, he might have won Waterloo, mate, but he was about a quarter of a million men short of the other army that was coming for him. <sighs> he needed to win this one. Big. Big. Fast yes. Find big. another quarter of a million men and then fight the Austrians and yeah. Russians again. Yeah. There's enormous forces converging on him, um, as before. But anyway, yeah, that's that's the light cavalry. It's cool. So I, I, I really I really like those. I mean, look at those hussars with those, those hats, mate. They just look so impractical, don't they? They're, they're quite tall. Mm. <laughs> they're tall, like top hats. Yeah. Uh, one dude's got like a bear skin. What's that all about? Yeah, so he's probably an, an officer, a, a hussar officer. That's cool that there's a bit of a difference there. And yeah. of course, the lances yeah, these, have the sausage These models pose. are not, they're not like all the same bows by any means no. either, are they? No. There's some similar. Or is it that they're the same bows uh, and then there's a sergeant figure? I think that. Yeah, no, there is differences. There's, there's... Some of the coats, although they're all sort of got their swords pointing forward on the charge, you look at the coats there, they do actually, some of the sleeves are wafting in the wind, some are not, some are. Subtle differences, but there are differences there. Oh, yeah, yeah, there are. And you don't want them too different because you, you play this game to get the regimental look, right? Yeah, yeah, come on. Yeah, you don't you don't want them all radically different. It. All right, mate, that's that's, that's the bulk that's of it. our response to the three sprues. Um, I think I think it's really nice. There's also more coming. There's there's they're doing Highlanders. And 95th rifles and French older middle guard. So they can really focus in. Yeah, on and I think they have like Marines of the Guard, which is again another unique regiment, but it was maybe there. Those are the, those are the things. So, uh, what else have we got in here? We got a bit of scenery. Yes, yeah. which is always good, right? Yeah. Uh, shall I open it up? Do you want to open it um, up? I'll let you open it up. You let me. You let me open it up because you can have a little. And then you can, you can keep the bits of Plus, paper. Not only that, you've been working with MDF of recent. I've been uh, doing quite a bit of this. Yeah, you know, you're gonna yeah. have a, you're and gonna have something to say. So like. I don't have one of these to show you, but I do. Have, do you want to show them the? I can. Oh, what is this one? That's one of the ones that came from the American Civil War epic. But if you see that, these, I was 
I was genuinely impressed with the quality of this this kit. So obviously this Warlord Epic, it's like 13 mil uh, foot to eye. Um, not quite 15 mil, but your scenery is going to be 15 mil, right? Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. not going to, you know. And this is Sarissa Precision 15 mil scenery. And it is quite precise. It is, and and it went together quite easily. It pushed out of the frame quite easily. You get these nice instructions. I mean, see how snugly that those roof parts. Very fit. snug. Yeah, I've just been demonstrating how you know, considering that that's in on, on the pieces. most kits, a right angle sometimes but, doesn't even yeah. fit. You know, yeah. just getting that slope of a normal roof. Absolutely. So this. Mm. This is so that's not in here. That's from no, here. no, no, no. That's something else. But, but as we can't build this in the next ten seconds. This is what you're getting in here. Yeah. So this one is one of the buildings uh, from I don't know La Bella Alliance or somewhere. What was it called? De, De Costa's De Costa's house in fifteen mil. De right. Costa's yeah. house. Okay. So it's a is it a single sheet? It is. It's a single sheet of MDF here. Well, you never. Um, which, which you can see there. So it's it's etched. It's got a um, little bit of uh, texture on the roof and so forth. And these pieces, you can see they're gonna they're gonna come out very easily. With some cheaper kits, you've really got a gouge at the at yeah. The, the, the gates are a bit too the sticky. Bit too strong. Well, look, these are just these it are ends just up tearing out. some of the the material away as well. Yeah, or, or cutting into it, yeah. or, and then you get like a furry bit of MDF when it comes to painting. Um, Which is a pain. Yeah. That seems to be coming out nice and easy. Absolutely. And you get instructions. They're IKEA type instructions. Yeah. But these things, they're still useful if there are obvious sub assemblies. Yeah. Where you need to leave that to dry. If you're using super glue, that's probably less of a problem. I hate super glue, so I tend to PVA it, which right. means I got to leave it. you a little bits. bit of wiggle room. What? Doesn't it when you're using PVA? It does, but it doesn't hold it still if you need to attach a bit That's to another the bit. The downfall, yes. yeah, yeah. And you even get a rudimentary painting guide on here. Very nice. Which gives you gives you an idea right down to like suggesting you can use templates for bricks and so forth. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm really pleased. And the fact that it is a Belgian farmhouse or whatever. Are you happy about that? It's like, well, because you can like... use it for just about anything. This is definitely going to appear on Flames of Warboard <laughs> at some point. You know, awesome. Uh, in that. So that's your little bit of scenery. I feel a bit of scenery really improves the starter set. Yeah, if it's if it's relevant, like, you know, like if it's going to do something, I don't know much about buildings and how they work in black powder, but... Um, but even if it's, even if it's well, just that you can't move brown, the, yeah, shoot true, through here true. or move around. Just having it to set the scene because it's i feel it's the part of people's collection that's usually weakest yeah normally and if every starter set they ever bought came with some scenery might promote everyone would have a lot more scenery yeah but it's the thing that people find hardest to find the time and the money for the extra you gotta do the dudes don't you more than anything yeah, yeah. Else. you always want the next army the next period but stuff like this i think this is a, it's gonna be a great you know very flexible yeah. piece of piece of scenery that you only ever want one of so great, it came, it came with it, it's going to be in some house. And you get a different one with the other starter army. Even better, it's not duplicated. That's good. Last few bits. I mentioned The thing, this. I want to uh, see that. I want yeah, to see you, that. You have a look at that, mate. Because I'm a noobs all right. You're so. a noobs army. French Pendergide. Okay, this is cool. This is cool. Block colours, even tells you the steps as well. Block colours, mm. doing your bits and bobs. Not that I'm a noob at painting, but I am a noob at... Mass painting. Ma well... Actually, I'm a noob at painting. I'm just really slow. But this is cool. The bibbles and bobbles. Grenadiers first. Second, third. What? Yeah, all the things. Mate. Mate, very nice. And, it, and, and again, flag sheet. Love this flag sheet. Um, so the way that French standards work, as Ooh. I understand it, is the first battalion in a regiment has an eagle, and the others have these other things. Right. So it's not. So it's not like every unit's got an eagle. It's the first battalion the of a regiment. The elite. And at Waterloo, I think most of them four or five battalions fielded per regiment. So you use these. You use these other ones after that. But you've also again, you've got on here. You've got some young guard. You've got some old guard, uh, middle guard, dragoons. Rain, a range of flags and just including a flag sheet 
this is one of the things that if you start with this army and it doesn't come with a, a box like this, doesn't come with a flagship, you're immediately having to find that and put yeah. a bit of work in. Yeah. If you want specific regiments, they're not going to be here. No. But if you want to play it out of the box, flags really, the smaller it's the miniatures, big the bigger the deal that the flags make and the more models there are on. So true, really pleased true. to see that in there. And then the last bit is the rule book. The rubes. Overjoyed that this rule book in, is in a little bit. In bubble wrap. Yeah, because we had a few of these get, get a bit scuffed up. Fair off. few. Yeah. Crushed. That looks meaty. Oh, mate. That that smells so good. toxic as, yeah. Plastic, it, you know, photographic really paper. Oh. Right. Um, other people have gone through um, this in a great deal of details. What's happening here is they've taken the black powder rolls. Yeah, looks like they've beefed it up. They've, they've beefed it up they've, and they've edited it. So A, they've changed the pictures. Nice. So the pictures are all like Water Louis pictures. Nice. You're not going to see some like, you know, Maxim gone in the corner. <laughs> they've removed many of the rules that just don't apply to the Napole Napoleonic period. Okay, so you don't have to sift through that. And nice. then and then specifically for those that are interested in doing the Waterloo campaign in particular, is to change all the scenarios at the back are uh, not from throughout the Black Powder era, they're all the battles and skirmishes of this campaign. Now that is good. Which is which is fantastic. I mean, don't get me wrong, you're gonna need more than this if you wanna play all of them. Proper, yeah. Uh, but it's it's got the army list, you know, stats, all uh, you know, all of those kind of things. And a lot of this has been taken from the, the, the Black Powder supplement for Napoleonics. Okay. If you're a real grognard about it, you probably still need that supplement. Right. But if you're just getting into Waterloo, if you're just getting into Napoleonics, this will do you. That's quite a chunk of a book, man. It looks good. Mate, I, I think I got the American Civil War set and we didn't do an unboxing because I opened the box no. and it was a, just a mountain of sprue. The same sprue. And I was like, I, I, I don't know what to say about, about this. There wasn't much to say about that. Whereas with this, th that they've, they've really really stepped up the game i think i feel extremely positive about this right now to the new manual yeah i mean that's genius having uh that book upgraded and put into you know respects of having it as waterloo is yeah. genius um is it just because the acw stuff was solely the same sprue that maybe you weren't interested and with the Napoleonic range. Well, it didn't help that I just, I just got some way through painting all that Kalista, which just is finished the same that. scale And well. then they brought that out. Yeah. And then they brought that out. And they did have a look at it, which is where well, that You had that to. Yeah, you had from. to have a look. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th I, think, I, I think as a product, I think this is a much better product. Um, definitely. Slightly more definitely. refined. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully it will be even more and, so and, in, and, in the future. And, and yeah, I think in the future, excessive. if these ranges do well, I think we will see more sprues. Yeah. Like I said, they've, they've already got some supplements to these and they, they, they do little regiment boxes and so forth. But still, and the fact that it's the two separate boxes, mm. the French one and the British one. Yes. The Americans, there was so much sprue. Just it was terrifying to look at all this I've got to yeah, paint. How do you sift through? There's, still, there's a lot here. There's 16 sprues here. Yeah. Um, but it, but they. You could do it sprue at a time. You know. There's yeah there's yeah regiment at a time. Regiment. Cavalry, and you won't need all of them. There are issues, right? Okay, I'm not going to deny. You don't want 16 brigadiers looking like him. All right, fair <laughs> dues. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, every foot artilleryman is in the same pose it, 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 uh, across them all. But I think in this scale, you kind of come to expect that. Uh, yeah. And I think that there are a range, there are, well, there are definitely other companies that do 12 and 15 mil miniatures so you can use feed kernels, uh, your, your, your brigadiers and divisional commanders, etc. But I think they probably will do some resin ones. Yeah, or surely, or, or surely they'll bring out some, yeah, some you command know. packs and bits and bobs just yeah, to be able to change all of those it up. things to give you some flavour. But the grand scheme of it and the visual spectacle that this very box could create, yeah. that's cool. This is the, well, this is one of the first times as well I've thought this would take such a long time to pay paint. I am actually quite tempted to play this with the colour. Bare plastic. bones, yeah. Risk. Because I've seen a video and it didn't look terrible. No. Wow. Because okay. of the shapes. No, anyway, guys, that's our look at this. Um, I don't know how much insight we were able to give you other than many, many other people that have covered it. <laughs> and certainly you want to know more about this manual has been covered in much more detail than, I, than I've done here. Any, any mistakes or errors are my own based entirely upon ignorance. Um, but in the meantime, 
Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye. If you've enjoyed this video and you're thinking, hmm, maybe I need to add to the Lead Mountain, consider buying Warlord Epic uh, Waterloo campaign from us on our online store, modelingforadvantage.co.uk. Thank you.